Hi everyone, my name is Esteban Plaza Jennings. I'm the brand manager for the new 2021 Ford Bronco. And I'm here today with Gary and Wayne with these awesome Baja Broncos. And we're gonna give you a little walk around to these two trucks. So Gary, I don't know if you wanna start off maybe talking about what the Baja Bronco is, kind of the history behind it and what we're looking at here. So um, uh, when these Broncos were new and popular, people started taking them off road. So Bill Strop was a guy working out of California and he got involved in the Baja racing. And so they started modifying these Broncos for off-road. So basically a Baja Bronco is a Bronco that you ordered from Ford and sent to Bill Strop out in California and they made certain modifications and basically it was a street version of their racing vehicle. So. They did a number of modifications to where these could actually be pretty good off-road, you know, right, you know, as a brand new vehicle. So they added a shock at each wheel, so it has eight shocks on it. And uh, they uh, radius this front fender area here, so a little bit more clearance off-road. They added a, a better roll bar, a better steering wheel, and they flared the rear quarter panel for, you know, to clear bigger tires. Some of the really cool things, though, that you could get um, you could get it, the engine upgraded. You could have high performance pieces and parts put on there, but the most special part is that you could get an automatic transmission. And Ford didn't offer an automatic until 73. So these 71 and two Baja Broncos with an automatic, that's a pretty special piece. They had to modify a, a Ford truck steering column to fit into this Bronco. Um, they actually initially used, I think even a GM steering box to make the conversion. But there were only roughly a hundred of them, so it wasn't that big of a deal and not everyone got power steering. So they just sourced some of those parts, had it all figured out, and you would just order it. And they would get pretty pricey, really, if you threw a lot of these options at one of these Baja Broncos. But they were obviously very successful uh, building image for people that ended up going out and buying a regular Ford Bronco mm -hmm. and dreamed of, you know, a Baja Bronco. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So Wayne, where did, maybe give a little backstory on these two trucks, where did you find them? How long have you had them? Well, um, both of these we've had for um, probably close to four years. I mean, when we started kind of getting interested in these, you know, we just um, tried to find a really nice survivor. That's where this one here is. It came out of Idaho. And then we found that one, and then Gary actually, his shop there in Denver, they actually completely restored it. Um, so they made them for five years. You had 71, two, three, four, and five. Yep. She made them five years. They did about 100 each year. And so what we've tried to do is get one of each year. And we've done that now. And um, so this is our first time we've actually had time to get to one of these Ford events. We knew it was going to be a special year, especially with the 2021 being um, 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 shown at this event. So that's why we wanted to be here. In awesome. fact, we have a couple of them on order, and that's our plan to buy either wider ones once we haven't figured it out, um, and then make them look like these. And so they'll be on display um, with our other ones. And, but um, no, they have a great following. Everybody really enjoys the um, the Strop Broncos, and yeah. it's just a lot of fun to um, share them with the other enthusiasts and you know um, the media like this. So maybe talk a little bit more. You said uh, you could get a different automatic option on it. What were some of the engine upgrades as well that you could get on these? So you could get a uh, like a, a Shelby sourced aluminum intake manifold, a four barrel carburetor, because um, the best stock Ford Bronco is just a 302 with a two barrel carburetor. So you could upgrade that with headers. Um, you could even get a 351 installed. That's a really rare option. Um, the C4 automatic transmission, they had to cast uh, their own um, adapter to fit to an automatic transmission. They said strop right on them. Really? So that was quite and a then The tires and wheels are pretty special too, but they did a lot with those. And these are really neat. These are actually a Gates Commando tires made in Denver. Wow. They're almost impossible to find. We have them on this set, and then we have them on the, uh, the, the strop yeah. chassis over there. But uh, you see, the, you, had, you could do the um, was it was it the white rims, the yep. silver rims, or the aluminum yep. um, rims, or something else they changed. Mm -hmm. Then they had this one doesn't have this has a winch on it, but then they also had the cactus um, smasher, which yeah. was just like a, a that's what they called it. <laughs> uh, cactus smasher is actually a, a guard, but the other one over there we have has yeah, it on right. it. Yep. 
And you could also get a complete roll cage. Okay. First, I mean, these have an upgraded roll bar. Okay. But the roll cage was a really uh, a big option because it welded all the way down into the frame. Did, so. it, did it come up to the A-pillar here? Yes. Or was it? Okay. Yep. So it was the yeah, full, full length of the passenger compartment. Um, this one here that we restored is really unique in that it has just, um, it has a, a bulkhead like a half cab pickup would have. And then it, they ordered it without the side trim. Um, and each one, yeah, each one of those things um, make it roughly one of one or two, really unusual, um, which was kind of fun. No two are, are exactly alike, typically. Um, so this is a, a really particularly rare one. It's a 1971 as well. Were these wheels factory, the chrome yeah. steelies? Yep, so you could get uh, this wheel, you could get it painted, uh, you could get an aluminum wheel. Also, mostly um, the 71s almost always have these chrome steel wheels or white painted wheels, and then as the years went by, then you would uh, find a lot more of the aluminum wheels. That one's a chrome wheel also. But our chassis that we have that was a display unit, it has the aluminum wheels on in so they really opened up the catalog and they were pretty smart about that they sold a lot of accessory items and they even um, would sell these as a like a kit so you could buy the, the brackets that they made to add the extra shocks and things like that you could order that through their catalog so um, they added a, an extra brace here for off-road to the bumper so it wouldn't yeah, bend see that. Yep. so easy yep. that was uh, one of the the neat additions to these and then of course the paint scheme um, and then through research that Wayne's done and people that we've met and talked to they made a couple of these that uh, were all one solid color which is oh, wow. um, actually nowadays um, people don't care so much for the solid color ones but it was kind of a unique thing that they they did so what we have here this would have been the display chassis that Strop would have made um, back in 1970-71 to showcase all the parts and all the different items that they did to the Baja Broncos. It's kind of like what you guys are doing today with the new 2020s um, or 2021s. So it was just neat to see all the different items they did and maybe Gary could touch on some of those items there. So obviously the most notable thing would be the automatic transmission. Um, that was a pretty big deal. Uh, you could get an upgraded engine with a 351 with this, uh, it's Mark Strop, but it's like a Shelby uh, aluminum intake manifold. This would be the extra shock mount here. Uh, power steering, uh, really big deal, not available on a regular Ford Bronco at that time. Um, the cooler there um, is a nice for off-roading. These extra braces uh, for out in the desert hitting things or whatever and then the cactus smasher um, grill there I guess guard uh, to keep your front end in, in good shape but they really had some some neat stuff that you could uh, accessorize your vehicle out with um, dual exhaust of course would be an important thing the aluminum wheels and standard on all Baja Broncos were these Gates Commando tires which are uh, no one's ever reproduced these as far as we know. Uh, they're really rare. I mean, they were around only during the time these Broncos were around, so it's really neat to see uh, an original set of those. But there's a very capable vehicle. Um, it had this, this was an airbag option here. Um, this was the, uh, the extra shock mount for the rear there, so. A really neat package that they uh, put together based on all their off-roading that they had done in the Baja races. Uh, starting from the early 60s all the way up into the 80s, they, they raced these Broncos very successfully. All right, so to back up even a little bit farther, before there was a Baja Bronco, they developed all this through their off-road racing. And to get to their races, they had a big Ford C-Series cab over truck that was their tow vehicle. And they kept that tow vehicle all the way into almost modern times within the last few years. And Wayne was able to buy the, the whole entire rig, the, uh, the truck and the trailer and everything. And we've set out to restore that uh, piece of history 
that really ties in with the Baja Broncos. And they did a little bit of other racing with it, Pikes Peak and things like that, but there's a lot of really cool, fun photos of Bill Strop and his crew. And basically this is a 1965 Cab Over uh, Mercury because they, they made a Mercury uh, Cab Over in Canada and that was significant because they originally started um, NASCAR racing Mercury's, Bill Strop did. So they carried that over into this truck. So these pieces are the pieces that they modified and, and set up on this truck. As the years went on, they wanted more power. So this is a, a 70s Ford 429 engine that they had modified up um, to travel across country and down into Mexico and whatnot. So this is really a, a great piece of Ford and Bronco history uh, here that, that Wayne has uh, decided to have us bring back to, to like brand new. So it's a really exciting project. We never worked on a semi before, which is pretty cool. But uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of moving parts here, and uh, it was really a treat to get to do, you know, a historic piece like this. What condition was it in when you guys got it? So it was very complete um, when we got it, and it had sat very near to the ocean in Long Beach, California, where their shop was at. So the roof seam had quite a bit of rust, so we actually bought three uh, cab overs um, to use as parts cars, and we took the roof skin off of one of them and re-spot welded it back on just like the factory would have done it. And, but all these working parts and the engine transmission, all that stuff is all original to this vehicle. Wheels, tires, the cab is, is in really good condition. So it was really preserved, used, you know, pretty well used. They, they got a lot of use out of the thing. But uh, when it's all done, it will have the, the truck and the trailer back to how it was back in its glory days. Um, there's a little machine shop inside the, the trailer. So they would haul one, maybe two race vehicles in there and they had a, a you know, a bridge port and a drill press and welders and stuff like that. So, you know, off-road racing, you break a lot of parts. So it was a rolling machine shop. So yeah, it has a mild um, upgraded camshaft in it. It has an aluminum intake manifold and a, a little bit of a bigger Holley carburetor on there and some um, 70s era ignition components, which we just went with to keep it true to um, to right how they had it. So it's hot rotted a little bit. It makes, uh, I believe, 440 horsepower, a little bit more torque than that. So I had to move this truck, you know, pretty good. And it's wild, you look at some like when you had the throttle, so like your throttle had to be here. Oh wow, you know, look at that. You know, and then, you, it, then you're shifting. <laughs> Right Where's there it? in the middle. Yeah, this one right here. I mean, look at the shifter where you had to. That's the shifter. Get, yeah, That's this had to go shifter. back here to go through back to the transmission. And then the drive shaft comes on the here. But then everything had to be able to fold up. Or excuse me, stern yeah. shaft. Yeah. Yep. But everything had to be able to fold up without getting in a bind. Right. So I mean, that took a little bit of engineering. And this is all the AC plumbing. Uh, no, no air conditioning. That's all um, air. Air. Pump, air all brakes. the copper was air. Yeah. Oh, uh, for the brake pedal. Yeah. yeah. Hydraulic or uh, air uh -huh. pressure brakes and stuff. Wow. For that. Does have power steering? Right. Um, Two-speed axle. Um, where they, where'd the shifter for the axle come in? How does that work? It is. A, it's just a vacuum-operated procedure, basically. So when you're driving down the road um, in fourth gear, typically you pull up on a lever, let off on the gas, and then it automatically shifts it at that point. Yeah. yeah. So we had purchased a, uh, a fire truck about 250 miles away from home to get uh, this radiator and some interior pieces and stuff out of it. And uh, it, top speed was 45 miles an hour. And as I drove along, I had to pull down the visor and read about how to put it in the... To you drove the fire Yeah, truck I drove off. the fire truck. <laughs> and so I learned how to do the two-speed axle, then I could get up to 65 miles an hour. So what happened to the fire truck? We still have it. Um, I, I didn't. It, we didn't need so much off of it that um, I hated to see it get parted out entirely. So I got a different radiator, which was inferior to use in this instance, but it'll be okay for parades, I think. And uh, so it's all back together and running again now. 
So, and I have a guy I think that's gonna buy it, so. But yeah, no, it was pretty fun.